So today we got a couple of news items for you guys, one dealing with the Nintendo Switch online service, and we have to have a conversation around that. The other dealing with Tears of the Kingdom, because we have some news for that game as well. But before we dive into that news, this video is sponsored by Honkai Star Rail. Brought to you by the makers of Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail is the latest new multi-platform space fantasy RPG created by Hoyoverse. The game features cross-platform play between mobile and PC with handcrafted cutscenes, characters that take their role extremely seriously, and with turn-based combat and sci-fi themed world, there is so much to discover while listening to some fun music. Last month, Honkai Star Rail took the RPG fanbase by storm, and this is really only the beginning. This is a cross-platform, free-to-play game with extremely captivating character designs, enthralling music, immersive storylines, and top-tier voice acting with intense battles. The new update adds a highly anticipated character called Jing Yon. He's one of the Shangzhou Alliance's six generals and leads the Cloud Knights of the Shangzhou La Fu. Jin is a mix of being a really laid-back character while being extremely calculated. It makes him a great mystery to unravel. He has a crazy ultimate skill that devastates his opponents along with a really sweet looking multi-target AOE damage move to please you AOE lovers. Truly, you should join the Honkai Star Rail universe today so you can check out all the latest fun with Jing Yong. Remember, this game is available right now on most platforms. Check out the pinned comment or the top of the description to find a link to download the game and make sure to try out Jing Yong for yourself. Be sure to use promo code HSRVER10JYTGHC for 50 free Stellar Jades. Thank you once again to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring our video. Now, I want to get into some of this news and the first bit we need to talk about deals with the Nintendo Switch Online service. Last night, Nintendo did another one of those late night tweets they put out there to announce new games coming. And we're getting this right off the Nintendo of America Twitter where it says Super Mario Advance, Super Mario World, Super Mario Advance 2, and Yoshi's Island Super Mario Advance 3 are all coming to Nintendo Switch for Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack members on 526. So this would be a week from today. That's pretty interesting. Those are obviously all Game Boy Advance games. It's nice to see a big collection of Mario slash Yoshi Island style Game Boy Advance games coming over. Look, guys, I do think that uh, the, the Nintendo Switch Online service at this point is a pretty good value if you're really into retro games. Of course, we also have to remind you that there was another piece of Nintendo Switch Online news which wasn't so great that came up, and maybe that's why they dropped this news now, and that is that Pac-Man 99 is going to be removed from the Nintendo Switch Online service later this year. And to me... That is the big bugaboo about this service. If you're not into classic games, Nintendo Switch Online really doesn't offer a lot for you. Yeah, it gives you access to play games online, like paid video games online, like Splatoon 3 and stuff, but that's not a good thing. Like People don't like to pay to access the internet they already pay for. So yeah, Nintendo Switch Online, if you're not into classic games, it still struggles. And one of the things that you do get one of the perks you get besides classic games is access to DLC. But then again, they stopped adding DLC to the service. So yeah, you get the Mario Kart DLC. Yeah, you get the Splatoon 2 DLC. We're playing Splatoon 3 now. It, it, it's kind of weird. They haven't added more DLC to the service. And then the games that you would get, like the Tetris 99s or the Pac-Man 99s, or back when we had you know the Mario 35th anniversary, Mario 35. They're just removing content and not really replacing it. Now, one other benefit you get to the Nintendo Switch Online service are those random demo sessions, right? Where they're kind of like, hey, you can play this game over the course of a week uh, for free, and then you get a discount if you want to buy the full version, which is weird because you can actually play the full version, but, you know, keep it, basically. And the, that's a really neat thing, but I do feel like Nintendo Switch Online needs to be doing a bit more. Now, before we get into our... Next video, I just want to thank you guys so much for being here. We are on our road to 133,000 subscribers. And guys, it, it, it's utterly amazing what we've accomplished so far. I'm you know, turning 37 this year. I have three children. And I'm just trying to show my children and myself, if I'm honest, that it's never too late to chase your dreams. My dream is to be a full-time YouTuber, not only able to support my family, but live a decent life. So I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel and just help help me uh, help myself, but also help show my children that it doesn't matter how old you get, it's never wrong to chase your dreams. All right, 
Now let's get into our final story, and this deals with Tears of the Freaking Kingdom. Some of you guys have probably already seen this, but Tears of the Kingdom updated to patch 1.1.1. And Oatmeal Dome went out there and tried to, like, you know, say, hey, the patch is out there. But it doesn't look like he dug too deep into it. The patch notes themselves basically say general updates. They fixed an issue where sometimes the player could not clear the main quest, the closed door, even if they fulfilled the conditions to advance the quest. If you've already encountered this issue, you will be able to clear the quest by downloading this update data. Now, that's cool, right? They fixed a broken quest. That's nice, especially for people who are trying to 100% the game. But they also note here they fixed several issues have been addressed to improve the gameplay experience. Now, some people worry that maybe they got rid of the duplication glitch. It's a really popular glitch. I'm not going to go over how to do it. It's out there if you want to know. And they did not fix the duplication glitch. So if you're somebody afraid to update because you frequently use the duplication glitch, don't worry about it. I think it's a weird reason to not want to update, but... Some people want to spam and have infinite Hylian shields or infinite gems or something. I, I, I don't know. Whatever you guys like to do. I mean, it obviously breaks the economy of the game, but whatever. People like to play how they like to play, but they did not fix that. And who knows if they ever will. Maybe it's one of those glitches they're just going to leave in the game uh, for those that, that enjoy uh, breaking the game in such a way. It's not like it affects other players anyways, right? So only your own personal gameplay session but i am curious uh what things they've addressed to improve the gameplay experience like the last patch they did the 1.1 patch that enabled fsr and gave us better performance so i'm very curious you know I, i've been playing a little bit since the patch and i haven't noticed much i'm wondering if game performance has gotten even better like when you're using ultra hand maybe the frame rates drop a little bit less i busted out ultra hand you know in kakariko village today just to see if it felt a little bit different. And this could just be a placebo effect, but to me, after updating, it did feel like the frame rate was a bit smoother with Ultra Hand activated in Kakariko Village. For those that don't know, activating Ultra Hand in Kakariko Village is one of the number one ways to see your Tears of the Kingdom copy on Nintendo Switch really tank in frame rates. So to me, it felt a little bit smoother. So possibly we have a you know ghost performance patch here although we say ghost it literally says they've solved issues to address the gameplay experience so improving performance could you know address gameplay experience but i'm sure they went over a number of other minor bugs and small things that maybe uh we just haven't really noticed because after all I, I gotta be honest i haven't really experienced bugs in the game uh, obviously nintendo is well known to release pretty polished games or yeah there might be glitches you could do but not actual, like, huge bugs or falling through the world. Uh, but I, I have seen a few complaints on one particular shrine where people kept getting a ball stuck and then they would have to reset the shrine. I haven't had that happen yet. Also, maybe I just beat that shrine the first time and never had a problem with it. I'm not really sure what shrine that is. So maybe that's a gameplay fix they put in there to be like, oh, the ball shouldn't be stuck. Maybe people just weren't thinking right with the mechanics and the ball was never really stuck. I... I don't know because I'm not even sure what shrine it is because every time I ask people what shrine it is, I get different answers, and most of those shrines I've done, and I'm not even sure how the ball could get stuck in those shrines. So anyways, what I want to know, obviously, is what you guys think about this news down below. Uh, do you think they should do more with NSO? Are you excited about these Game Boy Advance games coming in? Are you a little sad that we're losing Pac-Man 99? Also, what do you think about this patch for Tears of the Kingdom? And more importantly, I think, and this is a discussion we have to have someday, Will Tears of the Kingdom have DLC? You gotta remember, Breath of the Wild, they announced DLC before the game even came out. Now, I can understand why maybe they won't announce DLC right now. Heck, I don't even know if DLC will come this year. Because what we need to remember is that if there is new hardware on the horizon, say a year and a half from now, say holiday 2024, it's possible they want to time their DLC with that release now that might seem weird but adding massive dlc a year after a game comes out isn't really unheard of some of the biggest games in the world have done stuff like that like the witcher 3 you know with their blood and wine dlc like they sometimes the biggest and best dlc is a year out so i think it's possible they're trying to time it with that and then maybe one thing you might get is a free upgrade. Like if the next system is backwards compatible, maybe you can get a graphics upgrade or something included uh, with your DLC purchase. It's also possible that since I haven't beaten this game, 
maybe the way this game ends is so definitive it doesn't need DLC, but then I also think that would be weird given comments they've said about Ganondorf in some of their interviews, where they basically infer that Ganondorf has a bigger role and more to do in the future, but then there wouldn't really be a definitive end at the end of this game then, right? So I'm very curious about all this, but you know what? I guess we'll just find out more later. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.